Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is How to Create a Survival Horror Game in Unity, and welcome to episode 36. In this tutorial we're going to work a little bit with some UI and make it flash on screen to say that we've picked up this uh, puzzle piece over here, and we're also going to start looking at building our next little area over here, ready for our stalking type enemy. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come this series, and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So what I want to do with this is I want the screen to be a little bit faded for probably roughly four seconds and have an image of that half eye and also text to say that we have picked up uh, this particular object. And it's basically down to a sequence of events again, which is going to be within this left eye pickup script that we have. So firstly, let's add in that faded kind of screen. So let's go to game object, UI, and let's go to raw image. I'm going to rename it to say, I'll just say half fade for now. You can call it anything you want, really. Uh, we need to stretch this across the entire screen so stretch on the anchoring and zero on all those let's change it to a black color and let's change the alpha to maybe about 100 and i'm going to press play and just see how faded that is so you can always turn it on and off to see how faded the screen is so maybe a bit more let's try let's try 130 and I think 130 should do. So you work with it a little bit more if you want it more faded. Again, take your time with this. I think I mentioned it last tutorial where you should be taking your time with a lot of this stuff rather than rushing it like I do. I show the mechanics, you do the mechanics. So we've got that in place. Now what we need to do is have on screen the image of that eye. So let's go to game object and let's go to UI and raw image again. I'm going to double click on this one. So we can see it in place and let's attach uh, the texture which is the left eye onto there and we can see it all good uh, let's increase the height to 200 so we can see it maybe put it into place about there maybe increase a little bit so i'm thinking maybe with 200 height 400 about there yeah okay i'm happy with that Let's rename that as left i img. And finally, we just need the text at the bottom to say we got the i. And I think there is some um, somewhere, is it? I think it is. Oh, we don't, I'll tell you what, we'll just add new text in there for now. Again, it all comes down to what you want to do with it. So for now, uh, game object, UI, let's have text. I want it to be quite large and I want it to be white. So let's start with the white color and let's add text to say, you got the left eye piece. Uh, let's reposition it down the bottom so about center and let's also align it in the center and increase the font size to let's say 40 and recenter all good so when we pick it up it should look roughly like that now i know we've not really dealt with fonts or anything like that realistically but i'm thinking maybe we kind of should just a little bit so we may do that next tutorial because um, there, there are many fonts out there and it is pretty easy to work with them. Um, but yeah, for now, we'll just stick with what we've got here because we just want to get the effect and the mechanics in place. So now we have those, let's rename that text to say, um, uh, oops, let's turn caps lock off, I text. And then I want to turn all three of those off up here so they don't appear at all when we play the game good so like i said it comes down to a sequence of events in that left eye pickup script so let's head to that script itself which is here left eye pickup so we're going to need to de uh, declare those three 
extra variables, the half fade, the image of the eye and the text. So public game object and I'll just call it half fade semicolon and then public game object. Um, I will just call it I and then IMG short for image and public game object I text semicolon. So obviously we only want these to appear when we've picked up this eye and we're going to need to do this inside a coroutine because we need to work with time here because after four seconds we need it to go off the screen. So down here I enumerator and we'll call it I picked up of close bracket open curly bracket. So as soon as we've picked it up we want everything to come on. So we want half fade to appear so half fade dot set active true semicolon i image dot set active true and then i text dot set active also true semicolon and like i say we want it to be about four seconds that four seconds is the number i kind of came up with you can have it for as long or as short as you want um, so for now, I'm just going to have yield return new. Wait for seconds for semicolon. And then we just basically need to turn all of those off. And I know there's multiple different ways of doing different things. I think it's all down to how you want to do it. These are the basic mechanics. This is how you can do it. You can find different ways, make different effects. So. I'm going to save that script just to make sure everything is okay. So we turn it on and we wait for four seconds and then we turn it off. So the last thing we need to do is tell the script to run this coroutine, which is going to be down here. But I have also noticed this global inventory dot first door key equals true. Now, this is something we didn't touch upon last time. We need to make this global inventory have a new variable. So if we go to the global inventory script, we now need to add in another variable in here, which is going to be representative of that left side of the eye. So public static bool left eye. And by default, we'll put that as false semicolon and save that script. Now that does also mean that back in our left eye pickup script, we now need to change global inventory dot first door key to be dot left eye equals true. So that's telling our global inventory now that we have picked up that left eye. And in which case, let's now run that coroutine. So start coroutine and it's going to be I picked up open close bracket, close bracket semicolon and save. So that's all we really need to do in terms of showing on screen that we have picked up this uh, piece of the puzzle. And I guess you can add some sound effects to it if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to for now, but I guess if you can find a nice sound effect somewhere, add it in. All it is is just a little uh, variable and then play it. So let's make sure that this all works as intended now. I am starting to think I might um, bring the play. In fact, you know what? Because we're not really going to be dealing with that side anymore, I'm going to bring our player into this room so we can skip a little bit of the game, you know, because we're testing here. So let's bring this into this room. Is that about right? Is that in the door? Not quite. Let's put him about there. Okay, so let's try this out. Okay, so that's that. Oh, we've kicked it. I forgot to mention that, didn't I? We can actually kind of kick it a little bit because um, if it if we're walking and it hits us, we can <laughs> it kind of bounces off us and makes more of an effect, which is kind of cool in some ways. Um, so let's pick that up. Of course, that's not going to work. Why is that not going to work, Jimmy? Because we didn't set the variables. Jimmy, come on. Come on. We're 36 tutorials in, Jimmy. Stop being silly. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> let's add the half fade. 
Uh, let's add the I image and let's add I text. Save and let's get this show on the road. Let's test this properly. And goodbye. Oh gosh. Okay, so that. Oh, of course. I have just realized. <laughs> so the way this all works is a little bit strange. Okay, so we get to this point and we do set it as true. So, yeah. Let's turn that line off for now. Realistically, what's happened here is the fact that we have turned the left eye off and we can no longer run the script. But because we've disabled the box collider, we can't pick it up again. So what we might do is actually move this line of code down here and save. And let's try that again. Tell you what, let's clear out the console. So this is a classic example of the code theoretically working but it won't work correctly due to the fact that it turns itself off. Got the left eye piece. There we go. So four seconds might be a bit too long, but it still works. So I'm quite happy with that. Let me turn, in fact, let me put that to 2.5 seconds. Test again. You'll always find this when developing, you're forever in and out testing, debugging, changing things. Left eye piece. Perfect. So, we've got the left eye piece. I am happy with that. And I mentioned that we are going to have the next area where we've got a stalking enemy. The idea is I want to have some ground that the enemy will walk around and he will constantly follow us. So, I'm going to set all that area up now before uh, we move on to it. We've been in this toy, what, 12 minutes? So yeah, let's, let's create this next little area. So I'm going to save it and I'm actually going to turn off my post processing a little bit. It's kind of glaring in my eyes. So let's duplicate this section here and move it in place. And uh, do we have a test light? I can't remember if we have a test light. We do, don't we? The directional light. So I'm going to turn that on so we can see a little better. Let's rotate it so we can accurately see. There we go. And let's put that there. So this whole area, I want to have the enemy following us, but I think it's a little bit too small at the moment for what we want to do with it. So let's look at changing it ever so slightly. So let's go and find this particular um, floor material. So it's tile floor 002. So let's go to our materials and it's tile floor 002. I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate that. And we've dealt with tiling before. So I am quite simply just going to change this to 10 by 10 and attach that tile floor 003 onto there and then double the size of this to 40 by 40. And obviously that'll fit just nicely with everything else. It'll align perfectly. So let's have this round about there maybe. So we're going to have another uh, section over here, let's say, where we can pick up um, the next piece of the eye. So let's take this piece of floor. Let's bring it over here. And let's have that about there. So this whole area, like I say, is where we're going to be stalked. And I want to have different, like a different route kind of thing. So I want it to be a little bit enclosed in some ways. So what I'm going to do is just quickly enclose all of this here while I explain what we're going to do in the next tutorial. So as I've said multiple times, what we're doing is we're creating that stalker type enemy. And the idea of what we're going to do there is something called nav mesh. Now, I know we've dealt a little bit with AI previously, and we can effectively use the same style of AI, um, at least to make the enemy hurt us or whatever. 
but for now we're going to do something a bit different so let's have that there out there and this here is going to be where we get into our next section where he can no longer stalk us so what i would recommend you guys do before the next tutorial is just quickly build up this area enclosed um, i'm probably going to end this tutorial now because i don't want to bore you guys anymore with all this because this is just monotonous in some ways uh, i'll just enclose it but then i'll explain what we're going to do in the center of this so yeah next tutorial, guys is that stalking enemy with some nav mesh until then guys thank you very much for watching